I'd like to now call up Command Sergeant Major Retired Tom Bockel. Is this thing working? I was told by a lot of people that I talk too much. And I said I got it from the Army. I never used to be that way. Uh, I'm John Bockel, I'm the commander of the AMBES post here. Um, I'm also a member of every veterans organization in this community. And uh, I'm a Iraq War vet. I served 39 years in the Army and the Army Reserve, and I just recently retired two years ago. Uh, but more importantly, I'm a Gold Star father as well. I lost my son in Iraq in 2005 and was horribly wounded myself because of that and my family as well. I mean, the wounds like the, the gentleman just talked about, you know, is, is devastating. So we all know what that's like. Uh, at least I do, and I know was, and I know Johnny Motion here lost a brother in, in uh, World War II, and as well as your comrades as well. I'm going to talk about two things today, um, and on the record, David, or uh, on the record. So, and then I'll talk about something before I leave off the record. Uh, but the two things I want to talk about is. Uh, uh, something our AMBAS uh, post is doing, two th both things. Uh, as a commander, uh, brought it to the post and they were very well and over well, uh, overly enjoyed to, to do this. But in 2005, Easter Sunday, which is next week, uh, my son was home for the last time and we talked about what if. He was going overseas and we said, what if? Well, he said, tell me what he wanted. <clears throat> and I said, okay. And I said, I will do my best to see that you're not forgotten. But I didn't know what I was going to do if something happened, and I didn't know if I was to fulfill it. And uh, six weeks later, it came to pass. Uh, he was killed by a roadside bomb with three of his buddies. And uh, my brother came to me, and a couple months later, well, between between his death and the funeral, uh, we were talking at the end of the driveway one day. He just lives right down the road from me, and. He says, uh, I said to him, something good got to come out of this, but I didn't know what it was. And I just made the comment, and he got thinking, and he rides a Harley David motorcycle. I didn't even own one at the time. And he says to me a couple months later, I'd like to start a motorcycle ride uh, and to remember Nathan. And uh, we had, I think about that time, we lost another boy in Iraq, Matt Lyber, or excuse me, in Afghanistan. And decided to do one for Pat too, and then and then another one from Warehouser. But we call it the Honor of Fallen Motorcycle Ride right, event, and Ambets has taken that over. But we put thirteen thousand dollars to start in. When when we got cards and letters mailed to us, we got them by the scores. My mailbox was full every day, and it went on that way for a couple months. And they came from all over the United States. The inside was ten dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, and it added up to thirteen thousand dollars. And I said to my wife at the time, um, who passed away two years ago, or a year and a half ago, and I said to Carol, I says, uh, "What are we going to do with this? There's thirteen thousand dollars there." And she says, "Let's let's start a scholarship fund." And then my brother said, "Well, let's start a motorcycle ride." So we started the motorcycle ride, and we got people involved. And this is the Auto of the Fallen Ride, and this year we celebrate our ninth annual Auto of the Fallen Motorcycle Ride. It starts down south of town. We actually have two of them. We do one in the spring, and we do one in the fall. We also have the basement lines called involved. They're serving their meal. They're bringing their 49 members plus and coming in. We're involved in the community in this. We also have the Women with Courage Foundation coming in. They give stipends for the uh, uh, people that are battling cancer, and they're coming in. So we're bringing the civilian community in. The civilians, if you will, to help the military out, if you will, and, and educating people about that. We also have a POW and I eight hot air balloon coming from St. Cloud this year. They're going to get a free ride, a tethered balloon ride up 100 feet, and there are veterans that are associated with that. They drive, they go all over the United States, but they're going to be there weather permitting, weather permitting. That means low winds, no rains, no snow, things like that. We were supposed to have them here for the. Uh, fun on the flamble with the Lions Club, and they did not make it, so we said, how about May 9th? That's the first ride. 
you don't have to ride a motorcycle to come to this event. We have a breakfast, come for the breakfast. We have an afternoon, come in the afternoon for the dinner, come for the raffles. We do things with this money. We give our, we support the ambulance post, we support the auxiliary. We support it and, and have the POW MIA high level come in. We also give scholarships to nursing students here at the school uh, because my son was a combat medic and an Army LPN. We give money to the Basement High School Educational Enrichment Fund. That money is matched. We This year, we'll give a donation. We'll have, have gone over almost $25,000. That's matched for 50. That money never gets touched. They just use the principal. Things like that. We've been doing it. We're going to continue to do it. Forces involved. We all want you to come out and be a part of it. If you want to go and you got a, uh, an old Model T or a Model A like Jimmy on or a sports car, follow the bikes. One year we had snow so bad the night before, it was only 50 some degrees and it was cold and we had three inches of snow the night before the ride and we only had 55 bikes show up but we had 27 SUVs and vans full of people that rode bikes that didn't want to ride that day that came down and followed and we did just as well as if we had a beautiful day. So come on out. What we do with that money, we do it on that second ride that we have on September 26th, this memorial. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's three plates, granite plates. The middle one is six foot four high. The two are four foot six high on a 10 inch base. Dedication is supposed to be the 24th of May. We're going to still shoot for that, but I just got word today that the park board said the puddings that they poured last fall might be too small. So we may have to pour a new footing. Hopefully we can get that done. They want to bring these three panels in by the end of April and set them. Hopefully we can get that done. Tuesday, I'm going to go to the final list of everybody from World War One. This is Russ County's memorial. There's 185 names that are give or take after we wash them out tomorrow from the county that are going to go on that wall uh, from World War One. Those are all certain men. Men, there's no women on there, all men that have died while in service, either by combat, died of wounds, accidents, training accidents, drownings, appendicitis, blood clots. 1921, that was lethal. 1932, that was lethal. Boiler room explosions on ships, submarines that sank planes that collided in the air, in the mountains, all come home on leave. And maybe they drank a little hard, you know? I don't know. But you know what? When you're home, we all did it. When we got home, we were glad to be home, you know, and, and, and reunited with our families. We might have had one beer too many, you know, but that's the nature of our service sometimes, playing hard and working a little harder. So. We're going to put them all on and we're going to dedicate that and we're not going to forget them. It's everybody that tells me, we have a statue that's coming. The statue is very profound. It is a modern day soldier carrying a fallen soldier across his back to this place. And it's life size, six foot high. We were very fortunate. There's only one in the United States like it. And we got it. It's in, it's in concrete, been poured as a prototype for a bronze statue, and uh, we got the prototype. Cost us a little bit of money, but we raised it through those bike rides, through those fundraisers and stuff like that, and that's why we, that's what we've been doing. So we want you to all come. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about, and this is going to be the off the record part. So, uh, when I was at the Sergeant Major Academy in 1997, I was at the back of our classroom, and I was looking at a bulletin board, much like this one, and on there was some pictures from newspaper articles that were framed out, and on that was uh, some people, and they were digging in the dirt, and they had lines all gritted off, and they were sifted through this, and it was Operation Full County. And there was a master sergeant, and they listed the names, and all this here, these guys were, were, were going through in Cambodia, 
Vietnam, Laos, and things like that, and they were looking for remains of servicemen. And I read those there, but the desk that was in that room was empty, and I was there for three weeks. And right on the last day, I'm in that classroom, I'm looking at By God, there's the guy that was in that picture. So I went to the back of the room, and I went down there and introduced myself, and I was talking to him, and he was a master sergeant. So he'd been in around 20 years. And he was on Operation Fuller Coming from 90 to 91, and went from 93 to 95 twice, two times for a year and a half each time. And I asked him, I says, do we leave anybody behind? And he looked at me and he says, on the record or off the record? And I said, what the hell? Off the record. He goes, yeah. Yeah, we did. And I just let it go at that. And he says, go down to the library and pick up a book called Kiss the Boys Goodbye by Steve and Monica Jensen. I have two copies. And then I read them. And I'm going to tell you, there's too much there to, to dismiss it. The last thing that I'll say, and it's a closing of a song, and it's, it was, in closing, it was the lyrics of a song, and it says, it wasn't always easy, and it wasn't always fair, but when freedom called, we answered. We were there. Thank you, Vietnam veterans. Thank you, all veterans. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Can I have one thing? Yes. Uh, I was in O'Hare when they brought the Travis Hall a couple years ago. I was lucky enough to get a ride on the POW MA room. And it was fantastic. Um, I was up in Hudson to do an annual one up there every winter. And uh, there's wind that they didn't take off. Well, actually, the winds were out of the east, so they go for the city. Too possibly. But they did set up in the afternoon. Yeah, that's true. Our next presenter is 